Exponents. Integral exponent laws. Well, integral is another name for integer. So essentially what we're going to do is try and understand negative exponents. Let's start out with an investigation so we can get a sense of how to convert from a negative exponent to a positive exponent. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to find the power and we're going to write something in somewhat standard notation. So first, let's start with 10 cubed. Well, 10 cubed is 1,000. Next, I'm going to go down to 10 squared, which means I'm going to subtract 1 from my exponent. So what is 10 squared? It's 100. So what did I do to go from 1,000 to 100? I divided by 10. So let's keep this pattern going. I subtract 1 of my exponent, and I get 10 to the 1. 10 to the 1 is 10, so I'm dividing by 10. So here's what I should be noticing. Every time I subtract 1 from my exponent, I'm dividing by 10, or the base. I keep going. I subtract 1 again, giving me 10 to the 0. I divide by 10 again, and I know that 10 divided by 10 is 1. Now, anything to the 0 power is 1 is something that we learned in Lesson 1, so I'm pretty sure this is correct. But now, I go down by 1 again. Well, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So I now have 10 to the negative 1, or a negative exponent. So let's keep the pattern going. I'm going to divide this by 10. So what happens here is I get 1 over 10 to the 1. So now notice something. What does a negative exponent do? It seems to give me a number less than 1. Let's keep going and see if we can figure out a way of converting from negative exponents to positive. I subtract 1, giving me 10 to the negative 2. I divide by 10, and what is 1 over 10 divided by 10? That's 1 over 10 squared. Notice, look at the power and the standard notation. What could you do to the original to get the standard notation? Hopefully you've got a shortcut or figured it out. Now, let's keep going, but let's do the opposite. I'm going to divide by 10, which gives me 1 over 10 cubed. Now, what could this be as a negative exponent? Again, I subtract by 1 and it gives me 10 to the negative 3. Hopefully you were looking at this and thought that you had the answer before I put it up. So let's, what did we observe here? We observed that every time we decreased the exponent by 1, we divided by 10, or whatever the base was. We also should have noticed that to convert from a negative exponent to a positive one, we simply placed a 1 over the power. All right, let's test this. Does it really work? Well, let's try doing a question using both expanded notation and exponent rules and see what happens. First, 2 cubed divided by 2 to the fifth is the same thing as 3 twos on top divided by 5 twos on the bottom. We know that any time we divide 2 by 2, we're left with 1. 2 by 2 left with 1. 2 by 2 left with 1. So what am I left with as an answer here? Well, on top, I've got 1 times 1 times 1, or 1. In the denominator, I've got 2 times 2, or 2 squared. So far, not really a surprise. But let's try and do this exact same question using exponent rules. Exponent rules, when dividing with the same base, are to subtract the exponents. So, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So, let's make sure we get this. We have the same question, but it gives us two different answers. Well, if the question's the same and we've done the math correctly, what does that mean? These have to be equal, or our rule actually makes sense and works. a to the negative x is equal to 1 over a to the x. Or, to simplify a negative exponent, we simply place a 1 over the power. All right, let's practice this. Number one, convert to a positive exponent and leave your answer as a fraction. 
Well, 10 to the negative 3, how do I convert this to a positive exponent? I place a 1 over it. And I lead, apply the exponent to the denominator. So that's 1 over 10 cubed. Stop the recording now and do B, C, and D, and I'll do them in a minute. All right, B to the negative 3. Again, how do I convert this to a positive exponent? I place a 1 over it, and I get rid of the negative in the denominator. Negative 2 to the negative 4. Notice the exponent is only over the 2, not the negative. So what I do is I keep the negative outside of the fraction, and I take the denominator and put 1 over it. P. This one has brackets, which means the exponent, negative or positive, applies to both the negative and the 2. So I take my exponent, my power, and I place a 1 over it. The 2 is still over the bracket because the negative is included. All right, E, what happens when we have a fraction with an, and then we have a negative exponent over it? Well, let's start by taking it, doing this the slow way or the way we just learned, and hopefully we notice a shortcut. First, I have a negative exponent. To get rid of a negative exponent, I place a 1 over it. Now, notice earlier in this unit, I said you can't have a fraction within a fraction. So what we're going to do is convert this to a division statement. So I'm going to make this 1 divided by 2 over 3 squared. At this point, I need to multiply by a fraction. Now remember back from grade 8, when we multiplied by fractions, sorry, when we divided by fractions, we did the opposite or multiplying by its reciprocal. Well, what's a reciprocal? Reciprocal is the number that we would multiply the original by to get one, or taking the original fraction and flipping it. Finally, one multiplied by anything is itself. Now take a look at the original question and the answer. See if you can figure out a shortcut. If you can, try doing F, and I'll do it in a minute. All right, so for F, what did I get as an answer? 1 over 2 to the negative 3 is the same thing as 2 over 1 cubed. So what did I do to the fraction to get rid of the negative exponent? That's my shortcut. If I know how to do this, I don't have to do all the work above in, in E. To, uh, so we take the cube and we apply it to both numerator and denominator, which is 2 cubed. I don't take it further because it's said to convert to a positive exponent. All right, evaluate without a calculator. Well, you should have learned a couple of words so far this unit. One is simplify or make smaller. Evaluate means come up with an answer, but don't take it to decimal. So we want to leave it in fraction form. So first step, I'm going to get rid of my naive exponent. How do I get rid of my negative exponent? I place a 1 over the exponent and get rid of the negative. At this point, I've simplified, but I have not evaluated because I can still square 5. So what is 5 squared? 25. So my answer is 1 over 25 because the only thing I can do further is to take it to decimals. All right, stop this recording, try B. Okay, for b, what am I going to do? First, I get rid of my negative exponent by placing a 1 over it. Now, this is not fully evaluated because I can still cube 2. So what is 2 cubed? It is 8, so I move to 1 over 8. At this point, that's as far as I can take it without going to decimals. So that would be my answer. So what did I do? I placed a 1 over top of the fraction and then I applied the positive exponent to the denominator. Two, evaluate without a calculator. So notice this is a negative exponent over a fraction. 
So what's my first step? I've decided that I am going to get rid of my negative exponent. How do I do this when it's over a fraction? I take the reciprocal or I flip the original fraction. That's the shortcut. Hopefully you knew that already. I'm now going to take my exponent and apply it to both bases inside the fraction. This allows me to get rid of the brackets. And I'm not done yet because I can still apply the exponent to each base. 3 cubed is 27, 2 cubed is 8. Now, that's as far as I can take it without going to decimals, so that's my final answer. Stop the tape and try D, and I will do it in a minute. D, 1 half to the negative fourth. Again, I'm going to get rid of my negative exponent by taking the reciprocal of the fraction. I now take my exponent and apply it to both bases to get rid of the bracket. Now, what is 2 to the 4th? It's 16. What's 1 to the 4th? 1. So 16 divided by 1 is 16. That is as far as I can take this, and I won't have any decimals anyways, so that's my final answer. So how did I do this question? I changed the negative exponent to a positive by flipping the fraction or taking its reciprocal. And since the exponent was over the entire fraction, I'm going to apply the exponent to both parts of the fraction. That's both the numerator and the denominator. My final kind of example is to evaluate without a calculator, dealing with decimals. So how do I do this? Well, first, in its present form, it's virtually impossible for me to do this without a calculator, or it would be very difficult. So what I'm going to do instead is convert fraction to, or sorry, a decimal to a fraction. So 0.4 is a terminating decimal, and the 4 is in the tenth column, which means I can write it as 4 over 10. Now, I could try and apply the exponent to both parts now, but I'm thinking that I would prefer to reduce it now rather than later. I realize I can reduce 4 over 10 to 2 over 5. At this point, I'm now going to apply the negative exponent. How do I do that? I take the reciprocal of the fraction. 5 over 2, all cubed. Next, I'm going to get rid of my brackets. How do I get rid of my brackets? I apply the exponent to both numerator and denominator. Finally, I'm going to finish this off by getting rid of my exponents or applying them. 5 cubed is 125. 2 cubed is 8. Now, that's as far as I can take it without going to decimals. So that would be my final answer. Stop the tape and try F, and I will do it in a minute. Okay, F. 0.2 to the negative 4. Again, first step, convert this to a fraction. The 2 is in the 10th place, so that's 2 over 10 to the negative 4. Now, I am going to reduce the fraction whenever possible. 2 over 10 can be reduced to 1 over 5. I'm now going to get rid of my negative exponent by flipping my fraction or taking its reciprocal. Finally, I'm going to take the 4, the outside exponent, and apply it to both bases so that I can get rid of my bracket. Finally, I'm going to apply the exponent. 5 to the 4th is 625. 1 to the 4th is 1. 625 divided by 1 is just 625. So, to do these questions, we convert the decimal to a fraction. Since the number is in the <coughs> tenth column, we place it over 10. We change the negative exponent to a positive by flipping the fraction or taking its reciprocal. Since the exponent is over the entire fraction, we apply the positive exponent to both parts of the fraction. 